Hi, I'm Liz. I'm the Collections Officer at the Royal College of Physicians Museum London. Today, in this Museum from Home video, I'm looking at the fashion history of doctors' robes and what their clothes said about them. In many of our portraits, one of the most common outfits worn by physicians is the scarlet red robe of the doctor. Academic robes mark the rank and profession of the wearer. Before synthetic dyes, reds, blues and purples were harder to acquire and so wearing any of these colours became markers of status. Look at the bell-shaped sleeves of this gown. The volume of silk fabric used in its construction would have been incredibly expensive. Robes like this restricted movement, so definitely no manual labour would have been carried out wearing this. Academic robes originated from the church robes in medieval Europe. These robes were designed to cut a dramatic and awe-inspiring shape. An earlier example of the doctor's scarlet robes can be seen in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. The physician character is described as being In sanguine and in purse he clad was all in red and blue, lined with taffeta and with sendal. Translation, he was wearing blood red and blue silks. In medieval Europe, there were strict laws governing dress according to rank and profession. Physicians were allowed to wear robes like these, but Chaucer is critical of his flashy clothing choices, worn on what is meant to be a humble pilgrimage. The idea that physicians dressed above their station or were pretenders to fashion became a common stereotype, particularly in the 18th century. In this rare 1770s clay statuette, the Chinese artist Tan Che Kua has depicted Anthony Askew the physician in his scarlet robes. Askew is holding the other signifier of being a physician, the gold-headed cane. Alongside depictions of academic robes, the portrait collection shows the president's robe. From the 1730s onwards, the robe was handed down to each president. A new one was made only when the gown became too fragile to be used. This painting shows William Brown in 1767 looking extremely presidential. His robe is made from a silk damask, a method of weaving a pattern into the silk fabric. The arms show nine bars of gold lace on each sleeve and a row of gold stars at the shoulder. The robe signifies the authority of the president as does the college mace in the background and the caduceus staff he is holding. Ceremonial robes are still worn today during formal events, such as new member ceremonies. This particular president's robe was retired in 2015 and was last worn by President Jane Dacre. Dacre remarked at how heavy the gown was to wear. Less frequently depicted, but one of my favourite outfits, is the physician wearing his house robes. Theodore de Mayenne was a famous court physician of his time. De Mayenne wears a velvet robe, or banyan, and a skull cap. Velvet at this time would have been made from silk threads woven into a pile. So the deeper the pile, the more thread used and therefore more expensive. Banyans were worn in Asia and in the Middle East, and so his outfit shows his refined taste for exotic clothing. Being painted in your leisure wear showed you had the time for studies. Again, no manual labour was done in these robes. Loose clothing was thought to be good for exercises of the mind, so if you like wearing your dressing gown while working from home, you're in good company. Thanks for watching. See if you can spot the scarlet robes, the ceremonial robes and the velvet gown next time you can visit us at the Royal College of Physicians.